Hello everyone, Sableye here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are here, we are going to be looking at the Peoria Regional Results, which is the first major official tournament in Regulation E. So you know what, figured we take a look at this, look at the metagame, see where things are going. And guys, we're going to start off immediately, all I have to say is Ogre Pond, okay? And I said this on my last meta analysis video, that Ogre Pond was going to be an incredible Pokemon. And if you look immediately just at the top eight that's on your screen right now, it is Ogre Pond, Ogre Pond, Ogre Pond. Literally on every single top eight team, there is an Ogre Pond. Okay? That's eight for eight in top eight. And now it's not that Ogre Pond is this incredibly busted Pokemon. And Ogre Pond, yes, is an incredibly strong Pokemon. It is an incredibly strong piece, whether it's the, fi uh, the fire one, the water one. I think there was even three uh, rock types in uh, day two. We'll get down to that a little bit later. But just the general being that Ogre Pond has so many tools and it can be used in so many different ways. There's so many different ways to fit it onto teams, right? And it, it kind of sounds like a cop-out answer, but genuinely speaking, it can be a fire type. It can be a water type. It can be a rock type. It can be a follow me user. It can set up and sweep, right? There's just so many different ways to utilize this piece and to fit this piece on a team. A lot of the times you build a core and you're like, what could go here? But Ogre Pond can be so many different things. It easily slots in onto different cores, onto different team compositions. And it just feels so incredible to use if you can utilize it correctly. And you see that here with the top eight. And like I said, you had some rock Ogre Ponds here in 26th on uh, Aaron's team. And then uh, I believe it was down closer to 40, 40 someone, yeah. Down here around 41 with uh, Kevin Swastik as well, right? There's just it, it there's just so many different u utilize utilizations for it, right? It's like oh, Rock Rock Ogre Pond is arguably one of the worst ones, right? But like it's still finding its way into the meta, you know? It's still finding its way to do things just because Ogre Pond itself has so many different tools for it to use. And I I could sit here and talk for like 62 hours on Ogre Pond, but I'm sure other channels and everybody else is going to be talking about Ogre Pond. So there's tons of them. Okay? Absolutely tons of them. What I want to talk about is maybe some of the things that you don't necessarily see all the time or that you don't see immediately. And there's three key teams that I want to take a... Is it three? It's three. Yeah, three, three teams. My brain broke. I did some of this math before and I was looking at it before, but like my brain is still broken. There's three key teams I want to look at right here. I want to look right at... At uh, Justin's team in fifth with the Okie Dogie is definitely one I want to take a peek at. I want to figure out what's going on in 10th place here with a Star Raptor in 10th place at Peoria. Um, I also want to figure out, scroll down a little bit, where is Carson's team with the Illumise? That's another concept that I really want to look at. I don't know where the, where it is though. It's on here somewhere. I'm too low. It's on here somewhere. I saw it. Or there it is. It's just, you know, and it's in 14th with the Illumise, right? And those are the three the three that like... Pokemon that really no one expected to like go crazy I should say but I definitely think had a strong showing now okie dokie we've seen a lot right we've seen a lot with the bulk of sets behind screens but Justin had a different take and I really really like Justin's take on it right because Clefairy keeps your health alive you have a setup for a graph which I don't think anyone ever saw coming and Okie Dogie. And Okie Dogie was just your normal assault vest variant, but Okie Dogie does a lot of good things in this metagame. You know, Fluttermane doesn't really want to be in front of it. You slap an assault vest on it, all of a sudden Fluttermane is not realistically a threat. You know, you can't get intimidated by the Landorus that is literally everywhere, which was the second highest usage in day two. Probably talk about that a little bit later as well. But, you know, it just does so many good things. Uh, poison fighting is an incredible type cover, uh, is incredible typing. Like, Especially for the current meta, right? Like, yeah, you lose to ground. Yeah, you lose to psychic. But there's not that many psychic types. And there's only one real ground type. Unless, okay, we'll give it two because Ursa Luna Blood Moon exists. So there's like two ground types and maybe Furigraph and the odd Cresselia, right? Like the psychic types aren't very offensive. So Okie Dogie's, it's fine having those weaknesses, you know? Because it can deal with things, right? And... It was just a really cool team, right? Because I believe I'm not certain if Justin had Swords Dance on their. I believe they did though. Don't quote me on it, but I'm not certain if they had Swords Dance here. But setup beside Clefairy is incredibly strong, right? Now you have Clefairy, you can redirect, you keep yourself alive a little better because of Friend Guard. So now you're setting up the Giraffe, you're setting up the Ogre Pod. I believe they were Life Orb Ursaluna as opposed to like a Calm Mind variant, but don't quote me on that either. Um, 
Either way, just the whole setup, get the trick room up, just make your team so much bulkier, and still be able to do dish out insane amounts of damage once you get that setup off. Then you have heal pulse as well, keep yourself alive even longer. It was a really cool concept from Justin, I really did like it. Uh, Star Raptor, I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue what's going on here. Um, Peter, though, is uh, the same person that I, I don't remember which regional it was last season, but they cut with Halucha as well, or day two with Halucha. Uh, Peter is going to be that same guy. So clearly he's got something with these flying types that's really working for him, okay? If I had to look at this team, my guess would be this is some sort of Scarf Final Gambit to help get Trick Room up. But, like, there's more to that than, with, than just Final Gambit with Star Raptor. Right? You've got the Close Combat, you've got Scarf Brave Bird, and flying coverage is incredible. Especially if Ogre Pond is going to be on every team, right? So to speak. Not every team, but on a high percentage of teams, right? If Ogre Pond is going to be everywhere... A flying, a scarf flying type doesn't seem bad. Take a page out of Lando's playbook, but you don't need to Terra for that flying move now, right? So you can be really aggressive with this thing. You can go back and slow things down because you can just knock something out in exchange for you to get Trick Room up. And then you have only have three pieces to deal with once you're in Trick Room. Feels incredible, right? I think it's a little bit more niche than anything else. Like, I feel like Annihilate would have worked just as well. But obviously, Peter found the uh, niche for Star Raptor. It's a really cool team, right? Gonna get in Trick Room and then Torkoal. You're gonna get in Trick Room. You're gonna get Torkoal or Ursaluna in immediately and then go from there, right? So, like, that whole concept is, I don't think it's ever gonna necessarily be bad as long as there's a good enough Pokemon to function with that final gambit. And Star Raptor's cool. I love Star Raptor, so happy to see it here. And then uh, Illumise is. Is it not just a worse torn? Because in my eyes, it really is kind of a worse tornadus. But it does get a few things, right? You've got you've got that fake tears to help set up your TU and your Fluttermane. You've got the Encore as well, and Prankster Encore, I think, is something that not a lot enough that not enough people are talking about. I don't know if Illumise is the Pokemon to use strictly because of it. But it's one of the big reasons I enjoy running Whimsicott. Right? And obviously we don't have Whimsicott right now, so this is kind of like your Whimsicott at home, right? And just that Prankster Encore, so if I'm surviving turn 1 and you've opted to go for a Protect or a Fake Out or any sort of setup move or anything that's not really damaging my team, I can lock you into that immediately before you have a chance of getting out of it for the future turn. And that feels incredible to me, right? It's the stuff like that that forces your opponent to do things they don't necessarily want to do. And that's the way I, I do approach this game sometimes, is you need to have a way to force your opponent to do things they don't want to be doing, right? Your opponent in this matchup probably wants to fake you out to slow you down, right? Oh wait, you can't do that anymore because you're going to get encored into it next turn, right? Obviously it's not an exact science and there's probably ways to abuse it. Um, but it's really cool to see that there's this niche use for like Illumise here with like Prankster Encore, Prankster Fake Tears, just... It was really, really cool to see Carson capitalize on that. We also saw, I believe it was uh, Marcus uh, Marcus Dion down here. Uh, where did he finish? Like, yeah, 67 with the Illumise as well, right? I believe they ran the same team or if not very similar stuff, right? We saw Marcus on stream in the last round of uh, day one for the winning in. And Illumise actually did something, right? Obviously, Justin Tang was able to take away, come away with the victory there. But Illumise is a very cool Pokemon to see, right? And it's it's there's innovation here, like... I haven't even gotten to the fact that we have Nine Tails Bax Caliber creeping into this metagame, right? Like that snow like that snow core is incredible, right? Like it's not really abusing the snow all that much. Uh, I'm not certain if these guys were ice body or there was two of them, right? Yeah. Or I'm not certain if they were ice body. Actually there were three, right? Because uh, Abdul did it too, right? There were three of them? I think there was a third one. Where's Abdul? Up here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, is that the one I was just looking at? I don't even know. Either way, two or three of them. It's a really cool core, okay? And it, it just abuses things so much, so, so nicely because, like, Landris, sorry, or, uh, Baxcalibur doesn't really want to get intimidated, but you also want to be able to either go with, like, a clear amulet, or if you don't want the clear amulet, you can go with, like, the loaded dice set, and you don't want to get intimidated. If Landris remains one of the biggest intimidators in the game, I don't know about you guys, but I personally do not want to be bringing Landorus into Ninetales Alola, Baxcalibur, Ogre Pond. You know, like, Ogre Pond's kind of a neutral one, but Water Ogre Pond definitely helps, right? But at the same time, into a team like, let's take Abdus here, for example, I want my Landorus for that Heatran. I want my Landorus for that Ogre Pond to Intimidate. I want that my Landorus for this Rillaboom, right? But I'm justifying bringing Landorus 
where you can get set up where they can get set up with a Vax Caliber or just do blizzard damage or icy wind and just good damage with a nine tails into you is incredibly, incredibly scary to do, right? And it's it's why I think one of the main reasons this core works. It forces a lot it forces people to do a lot of things that they don't necessarily have answers to do, right? Like you gotta get they have to worry about Vax Caliber. But they can't really fake it out or anything because like Nine Tails could run Encore. I don't know if Abdul had it or if anybody else that was running this core had it. But it's a very decent option, right? And it's just, it's just a really cool core. I don't know. I think it's really cool, especially the Nine Tails, Heatran, and Baxcalibur stuff. It's like, hey, bring your Landorus. But oh wait a second, I don't really want to bring my Landorus. You have two Ice types that are right there, right? And and I just genuinely think that is a really, a really really cool concept. Okay. Rock, Ogre Pond, Kamoa, Sinister, I think is incredibly, incredibly cool because Sturdy plus Follow Me is, in my opinion, the niche for Rock, Ogre Pond, right? So I'm assuming the concept here is to click Follow Me, make sure you're either, you're either dying or you're not dying, but your opponent's not doing anything, right? Like they're either going twice into your Ogre Pond for the kill and letting your Kamoa set up, or they're not going into Ogre Pond for the kill and your Kamoa is setting up, right? So it feels... Really, really strong in that regard. You also have the 120 base power stab rock move that can't miss for once in his lifetime. Um, actually feels really, really nice, right? But on a team like this, feels cool, right? You get your Kamo set up, potentially. You maybe lose this piece, but then Sinister can heal up Kamo if they did have something like a spread move. Maybe you go the screens route. I think it's a really, really cool team. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, what else? Oh, yes. I wanted to talk about Fluttermane. Uh, there were only three Fluttermanes in top eight. Now... I'm not sure if that is like a proper like, oh my goodness, Fluttermane is falling off moment because there's still a bunch of them, right? They're still here, they're still here, 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 right? There's still a good chunk of Fluttermanes in this tournament and it's still seeing success. So I don't want to just ignore it, right? But like it is still relevant in this format. And I, I do think though, because of other factors, it is kind of falling off. Right, like it's not really doing much. The fire ogre pond hits it pretty hard. You don't really, you, you're kind of forced into shadow ball versus it, right? The water ogre pond gets that special defense boost, but it's still an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly strong Pokemon. And I definitely wanted to bring it up that, yeah, maybe it is falling a little bit in usage, but I think what's falling about Fluttermane in usage is how slappable it is. Like, yes, it's still very slappable on a team. But I think it's, it, there's a second thought now when you're slapping on a team. It, you're like, you have to actually think and go, is Fluttermane correct here? Like before Regulation E, it was, yeah, Fluttermane is just correct here. Or it, it, I'm hurting myself if I don't have a Fluttermane. But I think now there's actually something to be said and a case to be made to say, Fluttermane is still an incredible Pokemon, but it might not necessarily be the correct Pokemon for my team. Right? And honestly, I wanted to talk about this earlier. I don't know how I didn't talk about this earlier. This was actually on my, like, I have my, like, uh, what's it called? My uh, script in front of me here. And I literally had this as my first point, and I haven't mentioned it yet. And that's Torn Ogre. Uh, Torn Ogre and Torn Urshifu, okay? Torn Urshifu primarily, because a lot of people were saying Urshifu water was going to fall off. Tornadus Urshifu was going to fall off, and yet it got first and second at the same time, you know? It, it's... Everybody's like, oh, this core, you know, it's it's around, but it's not really going to be the same that it used to be. Yet here it is, right? It's going to, it, it is a good core. It is going to find ways to do good things, right? And, and you can see it here on James's team. You see it here on Lucas' team. And I really like this variant of Lucas' team with the King Gambit because I personally have tested King Gambit Fluttermane. It's, it's my core, right? I got second out of region with it. I play really well with it. And I like Lucas' version because it balances that defensive... Slash, I'm gonna sit, wait for my, wait for my chances with the ability to just go ahead and say, well, I'm just gonna lead Torn Shifu into you, and it's something that has to be respected in team building because there are a lot of teams where Torn Shifu can kind of just go, haha, tailwind, haha, surging strikes, and potentially just win games, if not win the game, get you a very good field position for the rest of the game after that, right? It's just incredibly, incredibly strong, and. It's just something people slept on, right? Everybody was like, oh, Water Urshifu, because of Ogre Pond, it's not going to be a thing. But one, two, three, four in top eight. Four Water Ursh in top eight, guys. That's that's a good result. You know, that's still a very good result. And I do want to talk a little, a little bit quickly about some of the cores and some of the things that I think need to be a little bit more respected moving forward as like kind of like final takeaways here. 
Uh, main, really, really quickly, I think Trick Room has to be respected. I am not a huge believer in Psy Spam. I don't love Psy Spam. Now, I think Psy Spam is one of those teams that you can walk into the matchup and you're either going to win this matchup or lose this matchup. There's not really a lot. If you have a bad matchup with Psy Spam, it's very difficult to overcome. Obviously, certain players can do it. I'm not saying that everything is unwinnable, but the, the matchups with Psy Spam feel very polarizing. But Trick Room in general... I think is something that isn't being respected enough in the metagame right now. If you look at Justin's team and you look at Leonard's team, right, they're solid pieces with Trick Room as an option, right? Some of them aren't necessarily hard Trick Room. I think Justin's is Justin's and Leonard's are both a little bit more like passive. We can get Trick Room up if we need it, but it's not necessarily our priority, right? Like we got, we, they have the Trick Room mode here, you know, Farigaraf can go Trick Room, Ursa Luna can go Trick Room, Okie Doki likes functioning in Trick Room, but it's not like it needs to be in Trick Room, right? They had the Ursh, they had the, the Ogre Pond, right? You didn't need to be in Trick Room. Same with Leonard's, right? You had the whole hands, Chi Yu, uh, Ogre, Lando, you don't need to be in Trick Room for that. But you had that option if you wanted to be in Trick Room and sweeping with it. I think Leonard was actually weakness policy Ursa Luna as well off of, uh, I don't remember what, I think the Dusclops was proccing it, but I don't remember the exact move at the moment. But it's it's that core, that Trick Room concept, See, even with Peter in 10th place. Peter's a little bit more committed to the Trick Room, I think. But Trick Room needs to be respected because it is always still an effective form of speed control, especially in a meta where most of the speed control is either going to be Tailwind or Icy Wind and stuff like that. I think Trick Room needs to be a little bit more respected, and it clearly wasn't here because it, it had a very, very strong showing. Um, now something else really quick, uh, alright, cores. I want to talk a little bit about the foil core, or in this case, oil, since Fluttermane is falling off a little bit, but that would be Fluttermane, Ogre Pond, Iron Hands, and Landorus. That is the core, that is the big balance core this format, right? And, uh, Bake has two of them in, uh, Hands and Ogre, so that's probably one of the surprise. I was honestly surprised that you didn't have the Landorus or the Fluttermane on this core, but obviously Bake found a way to make it work, and made it work very well um but then you go down here all you're missing is the iron hands on lucas team you go down here you've got three of them again right this is why i said oil right for the hands the for the hands the lando and the ogre pond you're gonna see it again hands lando ogre pond flutter right there's the whole foil core right there right and then like the more you go to, through this list there it is again right the oil boom foil right there you know what i mean you see these cores right these are the balance cores and these are the cores you're going to see as a balance, if you're trying to break balance, this is the core of four I think you're trying to break. This is the core of four you're going to want to look at moving forward and say, okay, can I break, can I get through this form of balance, right? Sometimes they have the water one, sometimes they have the fire one. And that just that's really just so you can play around with your other two slots accordingly. But generally speaking, this core right here of Paul is, is the foil core that is going to be on these balance teams. Sometimes they'll drop the Fluttermane, as we saw with the... Uh, uh, actually, Luca dropped Iron Hands, which I think was really cool. But you get what I'm saying, right? There's going to be these cores, and that's kind of the core there. We talked a little bit about Back's Tales already. I'm not going to go over that again. But once again, Chiyu Fluttermane still had a decent showing. Chiyu Flutter, right? Chiyu actually no Flutter on Leonard's team I think is really, really cool as well. See, you're seeing these adaptations now. It's like, as I say that, 14, 15, and 16 all had Chiyu Flutter, right? They actually all had Chiyu Foil. Which I think is crazy if you actually look at it, right? So that's two of the cores that I was talking about all on one team, right? And it's just incredibly strong, right? Like, it, to these guys, it didn't really matter what their last one was. It was, I'm going to pick a last Pokemon that's going to give me some sort of matchup that I feel like I struggle with. And that's what I'm going to help, right? Carson went on to a little bit more aggressive mode saying, hey, I'm just going to, instead of picking a matchup I struggle with, what if I kind of help all matchups and just help my Pokemon with the fake tiers, the Encore, right? Support my team solidly. Right, then obviously you have Justin Tang, uh, Jackson Ferris here with the King Gambit. You have Alex with the Amoongus, right? Just different takes on a very already strong core at the front five, right? And it's just stuff like that that I like seeing. I do want to talk about a little bit quickly about King Gambit. I want to keep these videos around 20th, just, sh just shortly after uh, the 20 minute mark, because it's meant to be a snapshot, right? I could sit here and analyze these numbers for weeks. But I don't want to sit here and analyze these numbers for weeks in one video. You know, this meta is going to develop, and I'm just here to give kind of like ideas as to what's going around, what's going on, kind of lay out a snapshot. I've said it, I say this in all of my meta analysis videos, guys. They are snapshots of what what you can see because I could sit here and like break down Bake's team. I could break down Lucas' team, right? Like you could break them all down, 
right one by one and go okay this is the format i've got 42 percent this 31 percent this right but like i don't think that's effective in video format like yeah i can do a little bit of it and break a few things down but like in video format i think it's really really nice to be able to get that snapshot you know get that snapshot throw some ideas in every in like the viewers heads and go from there right like king gambit boom 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 Three in the top eight is incredible. Then we saw one over here, another one in top 16, one just outside of top 16, right? It's a good Pokemon. It is never going to be a bad Pokemon. It might get a little overpowered or felt to be power crept in the future when some of the, like the restricteds come back, but we're not at that point yet, right? We don't have restricteds yet. Um, obviously, Ogre Pond might feel a little bit like one, but it's not. Um... Either way, like it, it's it's still a very good mod. The Defiant is incredible, and if if Landorus is gonna be sixty one percent usage, I think it was in day two, right? It, you know, it's gonna be something, right? With these Intimidators coming around, like even Arcanine Hisui had a really good showcase. One, two, right? Three in the top eleven, uh, three in top sixteen actually, and then one just bubbled, and then a couple just bubbled, right? Like, that's. A good showing for Arcanine. If Arcanine and Lando are going to be on these teams, Defiant is going to be an incredible ability. And, like, I think the Black Glasses variant is a lot stronger than, like, an AV variant right now. Just because it can do so much damage so fast, so unexpectedly, when nobody's really expecting it, right? Like, oh, maybe they won't lead Landers here. All of a sudden, they lead King Gambit, and it's like, oh, now I've given them a plus one. They tear a dark. All of a sudden, this damage output from this King Gambit is incredible, right? So I definitely think it's something to take away here that it, I think having that defiant mon with all these intimidates, with all these physical attackers as well. I saw a tweet from, uh, I believe it was Jody. I'll put it on the screen right now. But it's the, it is such a physical heavy format that we really need to find some special attackers, okay? Because we're letting intimidate plus these phys big physical attackers rule the format right now. Are there any good special attackers? Obviously, Jody had other things in his uh, tweet as well. Other takeaways there too, right? But I'm not. I'm really just focused on that. We got to find some good special attackers, guys, right? Like the special attackers are Flutter Kiyu, obviously Torn, and like Bake made a good call with Goldengo, I think. But like, there's not that many other ones. Heatran is arguably good. I haven't loved it in testing, but it's there. It's good. It's maybe good. Iron Bundle sees a little bit. But we've got to find some more consistent special attackers. Otherwise, Intimidate's going to be everywhere. And then you're going to get the anti-Intimidate. You're going to get your King Gambit. Maybe Grass Ogre Pond becomes a thing. I don't like Grass Ogre Pond because then like you're just Grass. right? Like I feel like having... You do get an item instead of having to hold a mask. But I think some of the other... like I just feel like you get two typings rather than just the Grass. Makes a little bit more sense. But Grass Ogre Pond is still really, really good right it, it, there's just a lot of things like even the apes right there was a couple apes here right like ape here ape here uh noah's team i actually know was like self rock blast which i think is really really cool um also breaks the sash on shen pao from the arcanine so that's cool to see right but the ape with the defiant right it, similar to king gambit it, if it, physical attackers are going to be thing things if uh what's the word if physical uh, if intimidate is going to be the reason is going to be the way to take down these physical attacking cores King Gambit makes a lot of sense. Any Defiant Mon, any Competitive Mon makes a lot of sense. Um, where's the Water Types, though? That's one other thing I want to point out. Where's the Water Types? Right? The only Water Type I'm seeing here is the Odd Bundle. Obviously, the Water Ogre Pond. And, like, the Urshifu Waters, right? But, like, I feel like there's other ones, right? There's a couple Dozos, sure. But, like, I don't know. You looked at some of these online tours. Melodic was seeing usage. Empoleon was seeing usage. But what I'm seeing here in these results is... None of them really made the cut to say, hey, yeah, this is a regional level team. Now, I don't know if that's just because someone didn't really feel comfortable bringing them and they may have been a good meta call, but like clearly they didn't feel comfortable enough bringing them. They didn't think it was a good enough call into the meta to bring them and succeed with it because there's no, there was none of those like fancy water types in day two, right? Like the... the the Melodics, the Empoleons, none of those actually made it. And like the online results would say otherwise, right? Like they would say, hey, maybe this made, a, maybe this was going to make an appearance. Maybe it's not going to make an appearance. Either way, like I said, guys, I could ramble on all day about these usage stats. I'm going to keep it as a snapshot. Uh, hopefully this video didn't drag out a little bit too long for you guys. Hopefully you guys do enjoy the video. If you do, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in a future video.